Kristen Ma, author of Beauty Pure and Simple and creator of Holistic Vanity. Uh, today you're joining me in the fa my favorite room in the house, which is my bathroom, where I apply all my lotions and potions, do all my ingredients testing. Um, it's kind of the beauty mecca of the house. Um, and you know, today we're actually going to be. Um, someone's joining me in the, my favorite room of the house. In the bathtub. In the <laughs> tub. Sort of, kind of like a tub talk. Uh, she's actually the author of Meals That Heal Inflammation, and she's also a holistic nutritionist, Julie Daniluk. And today I want to talk about inflammation, inflammation internally, and then how how that translates into mm -hmm. inflammation externally. Yes. So I guess I just wanted to start off with a really simple question, but a lot of us might not know the answer to, is how does what we eat affect, uh, how does it translate into inflammation? Sure. So there's a couple main causes of inflammation. One is infection, which certainly shows up in the skin. Number two is, is allergies can cause inflammation. Injury can cause inflammation. There, there's so many causes that we, we do have to look at how food can heal us and food can add to the inflammatory pile. Um, with infections, it's such a huge one, uh, especially with acne. We see it's such a direct link between a low immune system. That is a hard time fighting off skin infections. Uh, so we want to boost up uh, all the wonderful phytonutrients internally so that our immune system has the upper hand. When it comes to something like rosacea, we're dealing with an inflammatory condition of the skin where allergies play a huge role. So we definitely right. want to check out that. So how do you know what foods that you're eating are making you more inflamed? Sure, so there's the top five classic inflammatory foods that every single person would be inflamed by, like white sugar, white flour, and certainly trans fats, because those are not natural foods. Those are stripped of any nutrition, and therefore they're just spiking your blood sugar, which causes a hormonal disruption. Hormonal imbalance is another major cause of inflammation, so we definitely want to watch that. And any sort of negative fat, like a trans fat, we have to remember that every cell of our body has a fat layer. So if you're plugging that up with negative fats, your, mm. your poor body doesn't have a chance to really have the anti-inflammatory fats like the omega-3s really keep your inflammation under control. And in a, in a sense also, it impedes that communication yes. that those cells can, that need to happen within your body as well. Yeah, absolutely. So beyond your classic triggers, we really need to look at uh, foods that are inflammatory if you're allergic to them. So if you have a food right. allergy or food sensitivity or an intolerance, wow, that really shows up in your skin. So I really encourage people to keep a food journal and really figure out what your trigger foods are because really that's the only way for you to figure it out because one person can eat bananas just fine, another person would have a reaction to it. There is kind of a classic list for rosacea. Uh, the right. real ro rosacea list would be like wine and cheese and chocolate and all those things we crave, unfortunately. <laughs> Caffeine as well. Yeah, yeah. There's so many of us. Uh, yeah. Well, I actually can't because it makes me crazy. Oh, but really? I know so many of my clients, if you, they're so good about eliminating so many things, but when you talk about eliminating that coffee, especially in the morning, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a harder hurdle, I guess. It is, yeah. But, um, so we talk, you talked about sort of eliminating things that you're sensitive to, but uh, what about things that you should incorporate? Like, sure. what kind of foods soothe inflammation? Mm. Well, powerful foods. I actually brought a few with me because I really want to show off turmeric. Turmeric is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. This is, a lot of people think of turmeric and they think, oh, it's spicy, and spicy is contraindicated for skin conditions like rosacea. Right. But turmeric is actually quite mild. It's similar on the spice level to being cinnamon, really. It has virtually no heat to it. So you can actually incorporate this in a lot of places. Uh, interesting to note that turmeric is so powerful as being an anti-inflammatory that it prevents Alzheimer's. And in, mm. in India, in places where they eat a lot of turmeric, they have very, very low incidence of Alzheimer's, which mm. is an inflammatory condition of the brain. So I, I bet that you have turmeric within some of your beautiful potions. I, I do, did. I know! <laughs> of course, it makes so much sense, right? So there's an example of a food that's powerfully anti-inflammatory. I want people to really reach for anti-inflammatory allergy reduce breakfast options because a lot of people mm. go amok in the morning they have their classic bagel or muffin and coffee and those are like crazy options 
And I just thought I'd show off this really cool grain called teff. Mm. This is delicious from Africa, it's very popular in Ethiopia. And it contains 25% of your daily needs of iron, mm. wonderful balance of fiber and protein and real complex carbohydrates. And it's allergy free, like no one's seen this before, their body hasn't gotten used to it. Right. So it's not a trigger food, which is really important. And in terms of preparation, is it just like, you know, uh, quinoa or would it be, or would it be longer cooked like a rice, like a lombri rice? It's actually really, really short cook. It's 15-20 uh, minutes, so oh, it's very, very similar to amaranth. So this makes a great breakfast option because you can make it up like a porridge. Great, especially yeah. for people who are time poor, yeah. or someone like myself who like in the morning yeah. is running around, sure. that the fact that it's a quick thing is yeah. great. I try to really do some time saving measures, like I make up some taff while I'm making up dinner, right. and then I have it cold in the morning with my blueberries and some almond milk, something really fast and easy. Right. That way it's a five minute breakfast. It's faster than going through Tim Hortons drive through so people can't complain if, if it's done ahead. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay, some simple preparation. Yeah, for sure. There you go. Um, I didn't know if there was anything else in the bag. Oh yeah, of course, just, sure, of course. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hide out here. I, I just want to feel them. So <laughs> right here. we've got them between <laughs> us. <laughs> so uh, a big one is cabbage. Cabbage uh, contains indole 3 carbonyl which helps to cleanse our liver. And I have to tell you, our liver is such a connection to our skin. I'm sure you, you're a huge believer in that, right. especially with Ayurveda. If we, if we cleanse the liver, our skin brightens. And uh, I love the purple cabbage. We've got all that extra uh, wonderful phytonutrients like resveratrol and quercetin with, with purples. And uh, just to keep in mind that it's very hormonal balancing because our skin is really a reflection of how our hormones are doing. So our skin will balance out as our hormones improve. I imagine also that aspect of the liver, it's supporting the liver, is also another reason why it's so great for hormones because the liver is so Huge. fundamental in the hormonal balance as well. Absolutely, that's connection for sure. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to incorporate as many of these foods into meals that heal so that people have easy solutions because they may kind of look at these ingredients and go, I never have them in my day to day life, but it's so easy to sneak in. I even put turmeric in my porridge. I know it seems crazy, but yeah. because it tastes like cinnamon, it's not that big a deal. And it, it's really delicious hidden behind other things like cinnamon. Right, and I've actually seen people do like turmeric lattes and things like yeah. that, yeah. which are great. And it creates a beautiful color too. Yes. So just aesthetically, I think it's really nice to incorporate when you're entertaining and things like that too. Yeah, yeah very cool. I love it. And I'm thinking if there's anything else. I do want to just point out a very powerful healer for skin is fish oil. Yeah. If people are vegetarian, there is a, ve a veggie version. But you, we do want to keep in mind moving beyond just the, the classic flax oil potentially. Mm -hmm. Because some vegetarians have a hard time converting that to the EPA that's powerfully anti-inflammatory. Right. So EPA and DHA, those are the parts of fish oil that work much stronger than the standard ALA, which is the, the alpha linoleic acid, which is within flax oil. So people may want to consider picking up uh, something like this and having between a teaspoon and a tablespoon a day if they're if they have any sort of inflammatory skin condition. Right, and I've actually found it really beneficial for eczema. Yeah. People with eczema, it yes. kind of keeps your skin balanced and prevents those eczema breakouts. Yeah, that's beautiful. So we, there you go. So beyond food, I wanted mm. to ask you also about like food habits that are anti-inflammatory. Mm. So I know that if you eat like more regularly, so your body understands like when it's being fed and, and mm. sort of again just regulates your body, it can be very calming and grounding. Mm. Um, so I didn't know if there are sort of again like lifestyle tips and habit yes. tips that we can. Well, the biggest thing would be please eat uh, five times a day versus eating big, huge meals because if we spike our blood sugar at all, we're increasing inflammation and we're certainly that will manifest in the skin. So I, I really think keeping your blood sugar under control by eating really high fiber foods that we saw with our wonderful, you know, these sort of foods have uh, high amounts of fiber that holds our blood sugar under control and that will really help to prevent any sort of excess uh, insulin. If our insulin runs too high, it can seriously uh, cause a hormonal imbalance we see directly in the skin. A, a big connection that you might think of is polycystic ovarian syndrome, mm -hmm. which is where people's testosterone is running too high. That can definitely be helped by following a low glycemic index diet, mm -hmm. meaning we keep all of our food uh, below a certain level of sugar. 
and uh, eating more spaced out. No, definitely. The snacker, the rabbit, has it one for sure. <laughs> well, it's interesting we're talking about polycystic ovaries because there's so many skin sort of uh, skin side effects that come with that syndrome as well. So like breakouts sometimes, um, and there's other not even just skin but beauty like weight gain and the hair growth. So that's really interesting. Again, sort of looking at that translation of what we eat and how that affects how we look. Definitely, definitely. But um, also, I wanted to ask you about. Um, sort of your emotional point of view when yeah. you're eating um, and how important that is for inflammation and digesting things so your digestive system is not like overworking. Mm -hmm. That's such a great question because we are such emotional beings and food is our comfort. Let's face it, from when we were born, the first thing we received to help us feel quiet and comforted and loved was mm -hmm. food from our mother's breast milk, I hope. And, and we, that's continued, and so we often crave sugary, high-fat foods. And so if we can really uh, get any sort of counseling we need for our emotional uh, cravings, uh, that would be really helpful. Because if you are consuming more uh, than a few hundred calories at a time, your skin conditions are, are much uh, more likely to, to manifest because of this connection mm. with insulin. So uh, I definitely want people to find ways to feel soothed and comforted through friendship, through exercise, through uh, you know yoga, all those wonderful practices, deep breathing, uh, finding other ways to cope so that we don't default to inflammatory foods. Right. Because unfortunately that's really what drives our cravings is inflammatory foods. It's not like we're, we're just mm. begging for a carrot. <laughs> exactly, I wish we were. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess my last question is about, because um, we talked a lot about like, eating and like all these great things that we can eat, but also elimination, is that a factor with inflammation that maybe if you're constipated, does that create, uh, so that sort of the lack of like, taking out that, that food to leave our system, does that cause inflammation as well? Amazing question, because if you have uh, all that undigested food sitting in your tract, unfortunately you reabsorb those toxins, you reabsorb actually your estrogen metabolites as well. So a lot of mm. hormonal imbalances are caused by women who have constipation. Mm. So how we can deal with constipation is we must take out your trigger foods because certain foods just stop us up completely. Like dairy for certain people, whoa, it's just a recipe for constipation. And then we want to use things like, like the fish oil, um, and really soft, gentle, soluble fiber that really helps to assure that we have consistent movement out of the body. We really need to be going one to three times a day. Right. And if we're stopped up at all, then yeah, it's going to translate into inflammation. I said that was my last question, but I actually have one. Oh, please, yeah, I love this. You're so fun talking about them. Who are you talking to? Really, what do you say? Like, sort of, as you're speaking, I always think about different things. But uh, a, a great, sort of, like, basic question I forgot to ask you at the beginning was, when you're talking about using a food journal and tracking when people are reacting, mm -hmm. I see reaction as skin inflammation in my everyday job. But are there other symptoms that people should be looking out for, like that they might not know is a form of inflammation? Yeah, well, even cell symptoms like mood know that inflammation affects our biochemistry, our brain chemistry can be really thrown off. So if all of a sudden you are vindictive and lashing out at your loved one, you might want to look at what you're eating. I know that people, especially with a gluten intolerance, can notice that their moods really shift or if they're really sensitive to sugar and they're eating it, I know it's my kryptonite. Like if I have cane sugar, forget it, game over. Um, so really, really consider your emotional shifts, consider dark circles, consider di your digestive tract, any sort of burping or bloating or gas or, or serious diarrhea or constipation, those are excellent indications something's wrong. Yes, absolutely, your skin, but also your joints, muscle pain, mm. those are all indicators that, that your inflammation is, is up, for sure. Great, and I love talking about those other symptoms because it shows that your skin, yes, is one reaction, but you have to look at your body. And sometimes people have multiple symptoms and they think they're different things going on, like, oh, I have joint pain or I have mm -hmm. digestive issues, but they're actually sort of the same source and same yeah. aggravation. Yeah, totally. And one thing I want to leave people with is, is just how there is, there is beauty that's, that's topical, but also how, you know, beauty comes so far from within and it's right. so much how we feel about ourselves. And I know when I cleaned up my diet and really got rid of inflammatory foods, my brain felt so positive that I was able to feel beautiful. Because right. a lot of women 
are beautiful, but unless For you sure. feel beautiful, it doesn't really come out at all. So I really love that that's really the focus of Pure and Simple, is that you, you right. treat so holistically that I deeply appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Julie. Yeah, right. totally. And thanks for coming today. Um, I wanted to, my, I guess my final, the way I want to conclude is to ask you where we can find out more. Like there's okay. this wonderful book that's yeah. full of wonderful information, but also where can we find you online? Where can we just get more information on how to eat properly? Absolutely. Well, I have a great blog, which is just juliedalock.com, so it's really easy to, to find it. And my name is, is, is kind of the way it sounds. D-A-N-I-L-U-K, which is, is really easy. So juliedanluck.com. I'm Julie Danluck on Facebook. I'm Julie Danluck on, on Twitter as well. So I'm really easy to find. And, and just know that I absolutely love reaching out and answering cool questions. I have an actual Ask Julie section on my blog Great. so that people can definitely interact with us. That's perfect. Okay, cool. Well, if you want to see more about uh, Julie's endeavors and also your show too, yeah. I totally forgot to mention, <laughs> um, I'm going to be putting information at the bottom of this video, cool. but if you want to check out more information, you can also check uh, holisticvanity.com. I'm going to be listing all the practitioners there that I've interviewed. If you want to look at uh, more videos, my YouTube channel, which is Holistic Vanity, will be up. Um, and for now, we just want to wish you a happy, healthy day and hope you can take some of these wonderful tips and start incorporating them right away. Thanks. <laughs> Take care.